Kepler, J-O-H-N, Z-I-E, G-L-E-R. I run the website framingpaterno.com. I'm a nationally syndicated radio talk show host in Los Angeles. And I'm well aware that since day one in this case, there's been an extraordinary amount of media misinformation and ignorance. And so I want to make sure that everybody here understands the significance of what occurred in there today. Not just for Jerry Sandusky, but for Joe Paterno as well. For the first time since this case began, the most critical name in this entire case was uttered in open court. That name is Alan Myers, so-called victim number two in the Mike McQuarrie episode. He lives not far from here in Mill Hall. He was the man who on the day Joe Paterno was fired, went in unannounced to Joe Amendola's office with his mother and gave a bulletproof statement indicating that he was in fact the boy in the shower and that Mike McQuarrie was not just mistaken, that Mike McQuarrie was totally wrong about what he allegedly saw in 2001, although at that time, McQuarrie had the wrong date, the month, and the year, which was later corrected by Jerry Sandusky, which seems awfully odd if this is in fact an episode of sexual abuse. Alan Myers went on the record that day unequivocally saying that Jerry Sandusky had never abused him, not that night, not ever, and he knew things that only the boy in the shower could possibly know. He is victim number two. And when that moment happened, just hours before Joe Paterno was unfairly fired, that was the moment that should have broken this case open, except this case is unique. This case has a situation where there's millions of dollars incentivizing lies. And what happened here was that Alan Myers was flipped by a state college attorney by the name of Andrew Schubert who would end up representing nine of these accusers, all of whom got millions of dollars from Penn State. And it was after Joe Paterno was fired, after that moment when Penn State made it clear that they would be paying millions of dollars to anyone who was a victim in this case, that Alan Myers, who just happened to have a mother who worked for Andrew Shubin previously, and who just happened to have been represented in a DUI case earlier that year by, you guessed it, Andrew Shubin. It was at that moment when this case completely flipped on Jerry Sandusky, because once Joe Paterno was fired, the presumption of innocence is gone. And all of you jackals, all of you people in the media who caused this to begin with, decided, aha, Penn State has pled guilty on Jerry Sandusky's behalf, they would never fire Joe Paterno unless they knew that Jerry Sandusky was guilty. And then from that moment, the domino effect turns into an avalanche, a nuclear explosion on top of an avalanche leading to the free report, which lie after lie after lie to this day. And just finally now, just today, we have Alan Myers' name in open court. And how many of you people even know who Alan Myers is? I would doubt very many of you, if any of you, know who Alan Myers is and why did he not testify at trial? Why do we have the most important element of this case, the one that destroyed Joe Paterno, has three Penn State administrators still facing trial four years later and all the damage that occurred because of it, because of one man who has never been interviewed by any of you. He lives not far from here. He's never been interviewed. He never made a public statement repudiating that statement he gave on November 9, 2011. That was the bombshell in there today. From an evidentiary standpoint, that is the seed from which everything else in this case grows. It's Alan Myers. He was not abused, he never was abused, and he, has, he did not testify at trial because he was not abused. And you know who doesn't believe, if you take a look, at the defense's petition for conviction or relief in this case, you know who didn't believe Alan Myers and Andrew Schumann's statement that he became a victim? The Attorney General's own investigators. It's in the documents. Read the documents. They didn't believe it. They did not believe Andrew Schumann. They believed that Andrew Schumann was the one who concocted Alan Myers' story of abuse. It's all there. This case is obvious. All of you have blown the biggest story of your careers because you're afraid 
of contradicting a narrative that made you lots of money and increased the, the magnitude of numerous careers. Well, you still have a chance to fix this. Jerry Sandusky is still alive. Joe Paterno is not. You killed him off. But his legacy can be restored. This story is right for the taking. Somebody out there has got to have the guts to tell the truth about this. And the story is coming out in court today. Now, for those of you who do not have the facts, I'm offering you a book that proves Jerry Sandusky's innocence. It's called Silent No More by Aaron Fisher. I guarantee none of you people have read this book. Because if you did, you would know it's impossible for Jerry Sandusky to be guilty. This is the book written by victim number one. If you read this book, you know it's absurd. This book is a joke. If, if anybody reads this book and determines that this is a remotely plausible story, I got some swamp land down the street I want to sell you. It's ridiculous. And what happened in this case was not a conspiracy. We are not conspiracy nuts. We are people who know the facts. And we understand basic logic. And that is this, that Aaron Fisher lied. Aaron Fisher lied, and then that lie was used by investigators and prosecutors to convince enough other quote-unquote victims to go along with this, to cobble together a case. And would you please get the numbers right? Somebody just asked a little bit ago, what about the 10 victims that, that testify at trial? That didn't happen. There were eight, only six existed at the time of arrest, and only two of those six claimed actual sex acts. One of whom was an Aaron Fisher, who wrote this bogus book, with his therapist, Mike Gillum, and his mother, who's now driving a Porsche as her second car, and a Mercedes as her third car, which makes a hell of a lot of sense when you're the one who was presiding over him when he was allegedly abused a hundred times. Come on, people, use your brains. It's absurd. This, is, this case is right for the taking. Somebody out there has got to have the guts to tell the truth here. And we saw the beginning of it today, and it's clear that Judge Cleland understands that something is not right in this case. It's obvious. It's not even close. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, because I know I can answer them, and no one else can. Anybody got one? Can you say your name and spell it, please? John Ziegler. How do you spell Ziegler? Z-I-E-G-L-E-R. And the group you represent? Justice for Jerry Sandusky. Thank you. So it's your contention that the people who testified gave these heart-wrenching stories are liars and actors. I believe that some of them actually think that Jerry Sandusky is a pedophile because they were convinced by the stories of others. No one ever believed in a Loch Ness monster until people started to say there was a Loch Ness monster. And then all of a sudden, normal ripples in the water and shadows in the loch all of a sudden became the monster. But if you ask, as investigators did, dozens and dozens of at-risk boys, most of which no fathers, destitute homes, you ask dozens and dozens, you might find six willing to go along with this to see where it goes. And that's what happened after three years. Three years, that's what happened. It took them three years to find six, two of whom claimed sex. One wrote a bogus book. The other was caught on tape. His attorney and the investigators, those of you who actually covered the trial, a tape was accidentally recorded where they were conspiring to lie to him to get him to claim sex, which he was not doing beforehand. And victim number four, to whom I refer, is the perfect example of what occurred here. He was convinced because he was told other people were abused. And the same thing happened to Mike McQuarrie. Mike McQuarrie never thought he saw an assault. That's why he forgot the date of the month of the year. Until 10 years later, when investigators come to him and say, we believe Jerry's a pedophile. We got a kid named Aaron Fisher. He says he's been abused. We heard you saw something. Could you help us? If you're Mike McQuarrie and you were you felt uncomfortable about what you saw 10 years ago, it's not hard to imagine getting manipulated into turning that story just enough to where prosecutors turn that into a lie in a leaked grand jury presentment, which the judge clearly stated today was highly troubling, if not reason to throw this whole case out. 
And that lie, which all of you jumped on, that Mike McCleary saw a rape in a shower and told Joe Paterno and Joe Paterno did nothing. People, use your brains. Does that story make any damn sense? Why would a guy with everything to lose make that up? Who are you talking about, Mike McCleary? Mike McCleary, let me tell you about Mike McCleary. Just make that up. Wait a minute, he doesn't need to make it up. He testified differently than what the grand jury presentment said that he said. He never said he saw an anal rape. He never said that, and in fact, Jerry Sandusky was found not guilty on that charge. I doubt very many of you even understand that, but that's the fact. Jerry Sandusky was found not guilty on the rape charge in the Mike McCreary episode. He should have been found not guilty on all of it because no one ever testified to it. I don't believe that Mike McCreary thinks that he's lying. I think Mike McCreary believes he's telling the truth. But you also have to understand that Mike McCreary had reasons to be manipulated. When Mike McQuarrie was contacted by investigators, and I've released a tape of an interview with Don Van Atta of ESPN, who knew all about this in his feature on Mike McQuarrie last year, Mike McQuarrie thought investigators had come to talk to him because he had recently sent, in April of that year, pictures of his penis through a Penn State phone to a woman not his wife. That's why Mike McQuarrie thought investigators were coming to see him. Not, not because, oh my gosh, finally, somebody after 10 years is going to talk to me about the, the rape I witnessed at the, in the Penn State showers. That's ridiculous. Do any of the people behind you know Jerry Sandusky personally? We have several people who have yeah. contact. Are any of you being paid to be here? No. 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 So where are you guys from? I'm from Lock Haven. Lock Haven, you're all from Pennsylvania? From Maryland. Or State yeah, College. Yeah, but none of you have a personal relationship with no. 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 Well, some people have met him. We actually had here today, by the way, two people. This is interesting, folks. I know this, this might be a, a real tough sell for a story, but in the rational world, it would make sense. Two people who showed up today testified at trial on Jerry Sandusky's behalf. Interestingly, you know, if I was an accuser in this case, and I heard that the guy who raped me was potentially maybe going to get out of out of all this situation on a technicality, you think I might have shown up to see what was going on and to make my voice heard. Where are the accusers today, ladies and gentlemen of the media? Where are they? They're not here. I would submit to you that's because they don't care anymore. Because they weren't raped. They weren't abused. They got their money. This part of it doesn't matter to them anymore. But you guys aren't going to think about it that way because you already have your narrative set. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. So we're supposed to believe that uh, Mr. Sandusky is the only victim in this thing? Oh, no. There are plenty of victims in this case. Joe, Joe Paterno, Grant Spanier, Tim Curley, Gary Schultz, the Sandusky family, the, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the taxpayers of the state of Pennsylvania, the, you go back the, to the news media. Go back to LA. Thank you. I appreciate it. With no, no further questions, I will leave these books up here. I'm sure you guys will be thrilled to finally read the truth about what happened with Aaron Fisher, because this story is a joke. I'll guarantee these books will still be here tomorrow. Thank you. Well done.